A truly amazing start to the podcast. Uh. <laughs> the world's greatest podcast in America. As I ask you if you're ready, you say yes. I hit the button, which counts down from five. You immediately start yawning as if you're tired. Motherfucker, how are you tired? I'm the one in here at 1020 Eastern after doing a morning radio show and just recording Reed's Ranch. I'm tired. How are you uh-huh. yawning? Uh-huh. How are you yawning? Well, I just had a big hearty dinner full of bangers and mash. So I'm full of mashed potatoes and peas and carrots and sausages. So I'm, uh, that's probably why I'm yawning, but I, I'm not too tired. I'm good to go. I just, uh, I need to get my Mountain Dew out of the freezer, though. I remembered it as soon as you started. And okay, count- go ahead. The countdown had already started. Go ahead, right. which is also right. funny because I asked, you're, I asked, are you ready? And you said yes. I, and I know. I remembered it right when, hey, do our, do our intro. I'll be back in. I'll be uh, back quicker than you can say Jack Flash. The world's greatest podcast in America. John Reed, Cody McClure, Jack Flash, 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 Jack Flash. Jack Flash. It's a gas, gas, gas. I had to get my. Uh, oh, I, I think Dew. I got it out. I think I got it out fourteen times. We're going. By the time uh, you were back. This week we're going Mountain Dew Zero Sugar. Mmm, that Different. sounds awful. Yeah, you clowned me for the Diet Dew, so now we're still doing Diet Dew, but a different, uh, different brand of it. I love it. Oh, how you doing? What you? I guess you had. Uh, couldn't be bothered to record Monday. You had something going on Monday night, I guess, that caused you to not be able to do the podcast. Yeah, apologies. I, I probably could have uh, snuck it in, you know, if we could have done it like at maybe, you know, 4 <laughs> o'clock uh, Central or so, but uh, I didn't bring my recording equipment. I was on the couch yesterday by noon. I, I thought about texting you to to see if you wanted to podcast, but I just didn't have it in me. Uh I think Tuesday morning was the most exhausted I've ever been in my life. Really? If you saw me at the airport, apologies. I, I was fighting for my life, figuratively and literally speaking. Well, I figured this week would be kind of a special week, special circumstances. So I figured I'd just wait until uh, wait until I heard from you. So you had uh, you had a, a long long night Monday night, I guess. <laughs> I mean, it, it was a it was a four day bender. It was a four day bender, and it was uh, hot out there. So you mix in some heat exhaustion, and some dehydration, and some jet lag. It was, I think, the most exhausting trip I've ever had, and I've been to Vegas like ten times. This this topped them all in terms of partying, but also in terms of just fatigue. I, I was exhausted. Yeah. Can't do it like like you could ten years ago. Huh? It's a little, no, little ten, tougher. No, no, ten years ago I'd have been in worse shape. I, I am a uh, I am a man now. I, I am at <clears throat> that that time in sports where like you're not as athletic as you used to be, but like you've you've figured out the game so much. Like if I'm LeBron James, I'm not LeBron James when he's twenty three or twenty four years old, where he's flying all over the place. I'm LeBron James in like two thousand thirteen, maybe. That's or that's that second championship year in Miami or at least like maybe the second championship uh, or the second year in Miami, excuse me, where they beat the thunder, like where he's just figured out the game, maybe even like 2016 LeBron where he's just dissecting everybody and, and just, and just doing that. I'm that I've gained the savviness of how to survive these weekends. And for me, strangely enough, I don't eat when I drink. Well, (laughs) and all my, all my friends get weighed down with food and grease and all these things. Not me. I just start drinking and I don't stop drinking and I fare way better than they do. The only time I eat these days when I drink is at the very, very end of the night before bed. That's interesting. So you think that not eating helps you in, in a marathon situation? For me, I don't know if everyone can do that. All my friends are always like, but John, you haven't eaten. Please get some food on your stomach. And I say, nope, not going to fucking do it. I'm just going to keep drinking and I'm going to survive. And they're going to get all hung over and they're going to end up in the bathroom. They're going to be greasy, just sweating, feeling bloated. 
Not your boy. Not your boy. I wonder if that's the key. I wonder if that's the, the secret recipe to being able to do the marathon drink. On on Championship Monday, you're going to be mad at me, but I walked, to, uh, I walked from the hotel over to um, Jersey Mike's at about 10.45 a.m. I got <laughs> me some Jersey Mike's, and I didn't eat again until I got home from, uh, from the trip around noon. I'm not mad at you. It seems like routine, routine was important Monday. Everybody had on their – special shirts and their special shoes and their special seats. And you, you know, Monday was a, was a business day. So you had to do what you had to do. Well, I appreciate you for understanding. Do you drink plenty of water? Uh, no. I mean, I, we, we grabbed a couple of, uh, power raids out of the hotel lobby. So I had a couple power raids for sure. <clears throat> so I stayed hydrated in that regard in terms of trying not to, you know, go the whole time without water. It was too hot to do that. I didn't really have any water during the day, though. Like, I mean, I had water first thing in the morning and last night before bed, but that was about it. So I guess you got up there. Uh, you got up there Saturday during the day, right? And you? No, that's that's incorrect. We got nope. in. Okay. <clears throat> we got in about two a.m. on Friday night. We had two hours of plane de- uh, delays, but it was good because we were in the lounge drinking, getting the weekend started. So I didn't really mind the delays, but we we didn't get in until about two a about two a.m. Basically. So, you, so you you got fucked up Friday, you got uh, screwed up Saturday, you mm-hmm. got you got slo- sloshed on Sunday, and then you got uh, 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 just, just I call don't it, have an M. Just just call it going <laughs> to a different plane, moving off of this planet. I I rose above existence. I was the meme of the guy just floating above everybody. I had left this plane this planet and I was just with the higher powers. That's what it feels like to, to have your team win you a championship and also win you a big championship bet. It was the best of both worlds. <laughs> yeah. I saw you won about $15,000. So I guess, that's, was, I guess you're doing good on that. It was, it was rising above the plane uh, of existence. Yeah. Oh, I imagine that had to have been a pretty magical feeling, right? I mean, so you, I, I saw that you tweeted about you had an Uber driver take you across the border, yeah, to Iowa to put yeah. down a big bet, yeah. And that, now that was after we lost Saturday, yeah. Okay, and so you, so what did you? Your net was uh, what ten grand at least? And uh, nah, strangely enough, I lost a little bit <laughs> at the very end of the championship. I had minus one and a half, and they gave up that that bullshit run at the end to only oh, win by yeah. one. So like that, that cost me a little bit and I, I lost a little bit on, um, on the first game. So like it, I didn't clear any, like I didn't clear 10 grand, it, but it was a, uh, it was a good feeling. It was a nice win. It paid for the trip. Plus I'm um, like, it, it finally, it, I, I bet on Tennessee to win, you know, usually a lot, especially with the baseball team, when it comes to championships, I'll always have, you know, three or four or $500 on there throughout the season. Uh, same, you know, for football and basketball from time to time. So, like, really a team finally breaking through and winning. Like, I'm, I'm in the positive now on betting for my teams to win the big, like, the big championship. It, 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 uh, it only takes one, and they came through. So, like, I appreciate them. Yeah. Well, you at least paid for your trip and, and yeah. all that. And so, yeah. I got I got, I got to ask. A couple hookers. They, right. Yeah. They're, yeah, Nebraska, they're known for their – for you, for no, that. no, no. I, this, uh, this is for you when when you get back to Knoxville. I, oh, great! I, yeah. yeah, I've got a little That's... money to uh, take you down to the bridge and show you the real Vaseline Alley. Okay, a little si- a little signing bonus. That's great. A little Twisted um, Mike's Vaseline Alley. They just call that the back of, of of Twisted Mike's. I'll I'll take you back there to the uh, the porch out there and let you let you have your pick of any of any thruple you want to join. Oh, well, that that sounds uh, special. I look forward to that. So. Um, I'm guessing this may have been your most, now tell me if I'm wrong, your most euphoric feeling in a live sporting event between between winning the Natty and hitting the big bet, all things considered, with the vibes. Would this be your number one sporting event you've seen, all things so, considered? Are you talking just about the trip, or are you talking about, in the game, the moment like it it goes final, which are you asking? Uh, the, yeah. the trip, the trip was top of the line. I had a great time. Like the vibes were through the roof. Like you know, we we lived it up. I'm talking a lot about of people the... shook a lot of hands, talked to a lot of people. 
that loved the podcast, that kept asking about you, like uh, asking about Seth, asking about the radio, that loved them some John Reed and the content. And I do love all of them from the bottom of my heart, and I appreciate it. So, like, the vibes were through the roof. I had a lot of friends out there, a lot of fans out there. So that yeah. was cool. But in terms of euphoria, no, probably not, honestly. Um, the moment it went final, that – would you nah. say – Okay, nah. would would you say it topped, uh, I, for example, twenty twenty two Alabama in the no. moment? No? no. Okay. No, like and and like, I don't I don't even think it's the difference between baseball and and football. Like I don't I don't think it is. But like, I was actually happier when we won game two than I was when we won game three, which is oh, strange. Okay. Yeah. But like the 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 pressure, the tension of like it being a one nothing game for six innings. And, like, finally, like, scoring and taking control of that game. Like, I was 100% convinced we were winning game three. Like, I, yeah. I celebrated the first no- or the, the first win, the Sunday night, as if we'd already won the championship. Oh, okay. Well. Uh, and that's hey, how I felt. Like, it, <laughs> it could have been an ultimate backfire. And, like, I don't think anybody else probably agrees with me. But, like, to me, Sunday was better than, than Monday. So, you didn't second guess it at all on Monday? No. Like when the game no. got tight no. there in the ninth, no. Uh, no. you didn't have any no. kind of nervous no. energy or nothing like that? No, nah, I mean, maybe the only time I would even say I maybe got nervous was in the eighth inning until Kirby had the strikeout to end the inning, but I was never worried in the ninth inning. Okay. Well, there, there was quite a bit of nervous energy in my uh, in my dad's living room. We, we watched all the games together over at his place, and, uh, you know, it, it, was, it, it was tough. It was nerve-wracking to a point. I mean, I didn't really expect – uh, to feel that way. I'd never had a baseball game that made me feel that way. So I, I was involved, you know, it, it was, I, I got to really, I mean, I cared about it. And I'm, well, that's good. You cared about it. And I'm not <laughs> downplaying at all. Like I said, like the, the win on Sunday was great. I, that's, a, that's, that was near happiest I'd been. If game two had actually been for a championship, maybe it gets to that level you're asking about. But um, I mean, for me, just the ones that jumped to mind, like, the sudden ending of the, of the Hail Mary, the sudden ending of the Alabama game, ending that streak among 100,000 people. I was pretty happy when the Titans beat Tom Brady and ended that, you know, that, that dynasty. When they beat the Ravens, I was pretty happy. Like, there's been some really good ones. I, I've had some awesome moments. This one's up there. Like, it's in my top five, and it might be in my top two or three. I'm just saying I, I don't give it the clear-cut number one. Okay. But but for your in terms of your fandom, I mean this this would outrank like a singular football victory, right? I mean I know you haven't we haven't seen a, a foot we haven't seen our team win a football championship or anything. But well, I did. Ne- but I was eight. I was eight years old. But I, I did. Well, see, yeah, I, yeah. I, I remember it. Yeah. Okay. Well. Yeah. But but I guess in terms of being there, like you still wouldn't put right. it ahead of a of one of those football games. No, nah, I mean I, I think. I think it's behind Alabama. It's behind the Hail Mary because, like, both of those were just great nights as well. Like, the hour on the field, hugging people after beating Alabama, <laughs> the camaraderie there was special. For me, 2016, being in Athens and, like, taking over Athens and dancing on tables and just being with a bunch of people, like, that was jubilation too. Like, they're they're comparable. And maybe, you know, maybe, maybe that's just a dumb take and I'm just trying to be a little too level-headed about it, but, like, baseball is weird in the sense he had to win three games or, you know, you had, it was the best of three. You had to win two games. And I think the more exciting win was game one. Well, win one game two. Fuck. I'm, I'm, I'm running on fumes, buddy. Yeah. Well, we, I'm running on fumes. Well, we're only putting one of these out this week, I think. Right. So, you know, hopefully we can make a good podcast for the, for the fans here. Yeah. We, well, maybe we'll try three next week to get back on track. Cause I do appreciate knowing, that like early in the week, the number is going to be odd, and that the second episode is going to be even. It helps me remember, um, mm-hmm. so I do like that. But I don't think we got very many uh, good uh, YouTube questions for another mailbag episode. So maybe some people will write some in. Yeah, so we got we got a few YouTube comments on the last episode, but but, but no questions though, right? Uh, not not really. No. Yeah. See, I, I wanted questions, questions for a mailbag. We didn't really get many of those. Well, maybe people will ask questions on this one. Uh, please remember to ask questions and also like, subscribe, and come on my face. Uh, another housekeeping note, I just wanted to say, uh, fuck Greg McElroy. Uh, he's a bitch. 
And what also a, even more of a bitch, even more of a bitch for trying to apologize today. Did you hear his apology? Yeah, I heard that. I, I, Holy I imagine... shit. On, on the YouTube video. I don't know if anybody else is watching, but if you are, go back to the 1508 minute, the 1508 mark. I swear to God, I've never thought this about you, but just when you put your head down just then and looked back up, you look like Kendrick Perkins. <laughs> Yeah, well, not so much that time, but the 1508 mark, maybe someone else will see this and agree with me. You look like Big Perk. I've never thought that about you, but now I see it. That's all I can see. Well, when you consider the athleticism that that Perk and I both had, I mean, we, we, I can kind of see some similarities. Sure. You know, we, we could be related. We, we probably do kind of look alike. I, I don't know. I, I've never heard that comparison for sure, that I look like Kendrick Perkins. That, that's a new one. Um, maybe maybe you two could go to like the 1508 mark and, and see it yeah well uh speaking of the nba I, I, you said you were doing a podcast earlier but i'm sure you saw the breaking news uh, dalton connect drafted by the los angeles lakers this evening yeah yep um at, at about the pick 12 mark well really like the pick eight mark i was like okay well at least now maybe he has a good chance of going to a a good team a good, a good organization that maybe he'll be able to thrive and actually contribute. And then I was like, I really hope Oklahoma City takes them because I think they're building like a championship core and he has a chance to do something special there. Uh, they didn't take him. Then I was like, okay, maybe Miami takes him and I'd like to see him in Miami, you know, the whole heat culture thing. And uh, I didn't get a notification that they took him. I was doing another podcast and I, I got a text saying he's a Laker. So I like that fits. I think he'll have a really good chance to make – first team all rookie and and maybe even be rookie of the year because I think they'll they'll need him. And I think uh, LeBron will, uh, will make him good. LeBron's got a good track record of making shooters. Good. I think he'll be Austin Reeves on steroids. Except for his own son, Bronny. Well, he hasn't played with Bronny yet. Yeah, but he's his father. I mean, you'd think Bronny would be a little bit of a better shooter. Well, you know, Bronny, you know, it's important to keep in mind with Bronny, the guy died, you know, last year. That's no excuse. He, he, went, he, he went into cardiac arrest on, on, the, on the practice court. So, like, he, he didn't really have a, uh, a great experience in college. I, I think Bronny will be fine. He's no Dalton Connect, but he'll be fine. You mentioned uh, heat culture. And uh, speaking of that, I wanted to ask you if you saw anybody drop in Omaha in those 98 to 100 degree temperatures, do you see anybody have a heat my, stroke or anything friend, like that? My friend Powers, he uh, oh, in, in no. my travel in my travel party. I won't say he completely dropped, but I have never been around a friend who was in worse shape than he was on Monday <laughs> at about 1 p.m. He was just sitting at the bar, not drinking, drinking water, just pouring sweat, and life had left his eyes. And we convinced him to go get an IV at one of those like IV places. And he went and paid $130 and got an IV and then showed back up an hour and a half later with a couple of drinks in hand, ready to party. But wow. the, the, the heat beat him. You can't let the heat beat you. I saw the parade yesterday. Apparently they had some issues in Knoxville. With, I was really uh, worried that that was like, a, I was really worried that that was like a racial, something racial had happened while Christian Moore was talking or that there was some like protesters disrupting it. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. I was really worried about that until I saw the news that no, it's just a couple people almost died from the heat. And I was like, Oh good. Good. I was worried about making headlines for the wrong reasons. what do you think about Tony signing those big, the, the big breasted black woman's titties? That was pretty cool. Wasn't it? Equality is what I first thought. I was like, Oh, I heard he signed some titties. I was like, okay. I wonder what this white woman looks like. And I was like, nope, not a white woman. Okay. A big chested black woman. Love to see it, Tony. Signing boobies and babies. He was out there. He's a man of the people, man. He he is a, a politician in the best sense. Well, I'm glad we won us a championship. It, it does feel uh, validating in a way. I've been wearing around my my Tennessee gear up here in Arkansas the last couple of days. And do, do you just, wish just, you were still in Texas doing it? Or are you happy it's in Arkansas because they hate Tony a lot too? No, I mean, I, it doesn't really matter to me where I'm at. I just, I feel proud to be wearing the Tennessee orange this week. It's, oh, wow. it, it feels cooler than I thought it would actually. 
I mean, you know, we, we most of us as Tennessee fans didn't really know much about the sport of baseball till about five years ago. But uh, following this has has been a great it's been a great ride these last uh, five weeks or so that I've been following this team, and uh, I feel like we did win a championship. It it does feel validating. All the shit you used to talk about people that cared about baseball. All the shit over the springs and summers were like, yeah, it's not actually going to count. It's it's baseball. <laughs> it's baseball. You're not actually going to be excited for a championship. It's baseball. Well, it's not football. It's not even basketball or women's basketball. It's baseball. Well, those things are still are still true to a point, but but it does count as a championship. It is a team sport and it is one of the top 3. I mean, hell, it's America's pastime, man. You know what they say about baseball? So, and and you know, there's a lot of people saying, I've seen the narrative also changing this week that Tony is now they're calling him the Nick Saban of uh college oh, baseball. Oh, hold this. on. Hold on. I've been saying that for years. No one's getting credit for that for 2 years. I've been saying Tennessee baseball is the new Alabama football <laughs> of college baseball. Okay, no no one's taking that take away from me. I've been saying it for years. I don't know if I ever heard you say that. I but... said it many fucking times. <laughs> now, whether or not you were paying attention or you followed it up with, it's baseball, bro, or he's got to win a national championship. 27 Yankees. If you were doing your little, your, your dumb fucking gimmicks you do and didn't pay attention because oh. you were texting your phone. That's not a, that's not on me was, or texting on your phone. Texting my phone. <laughs> texting on your phone. No, go search the tweets. Go listen to the old shows. I've been saying Tennessee baseball is the Alabama football of college baseball in the sense of we're always going to reload. Check. We did that. We lost a lot of good players last year. Didn't matter. Brought a bunch in. We're always going to be a popular destination in the transfer portal. Check. Players want to sign up to play for Tony just like they want to play for Nick Saban. And that Tony is so good that you're always going to be right there at the end with a chance to win. Well, I think we may get some of these. Uh, hopefully, we get some of these A and M transfers now. That old uh, Slossinger, Slushing, whatever his name is, he he's going to Texas now. Uh, it sucks for those A and M people. You, you feel Man. any uh, uh, empathy for the? No, no, they're for assholes. the Aggies. No, they're assholes and they're weirdos. They're assholes. I feel bad, and, and I know it's just because I just did it, but like. These are all the same talking points I just had on Reed's Ranch. <laughs> well, we should move on to something else yeah. soon. Then. This, this but... is too much sports. Last question about sports. Did you um, feel left out that you weren't in Knoxville or in Omaha, that you were in your dad's living room in, in Arkansas? No, not really. That's no, good. I, I, good. I, I didn't feel left out. It. Now, if it was a football championship, I would have had to have made damn sure I was there, of course. I was... Uh, talking to my friend Dr. Vall about it, and uh, you know, I told him for a championship, for a football championship, I'd find a way to be there. Because there were a couple of people that tagged me about, you know, I need to go to Omaha. You need to get up there with the boys, get up there with everybody, and and I was like, well, you know, I'm, I'm probably not going to be able to make this one. But I don't, I don't think I saw any of those tweets. I think, I think you're making you're those probably, up. You're probably drunk. You probably <laughs> forgot that you. I was. You probably forgot about it because you. Was at at a certain point, drunk. at a certain point, I'm going to be too old to be doing this and and being openly drunk in public. It, it's getting close, especially with the jersey unbuttoned, showing off the belly. I, if I if I'm not already to that point, it it maybe is now. Like maybe now is the time to retire that. Well, yeah, you know, I saw that. I did see that, and it was hot. And it, it was, was really hot. Well, I wouldn't say it was hot. I mean, it was. Well, some would say sexy. Some would say the right amount of classy. But I, I meant, would say button your fucking shirt up. No one said it to my face. <laughs> no one said it to my face. I'll, I'll tell you that much. But well, I meant hot, literally, like temperature wise. Well, I was fighting for my life out there, Cody. When you when you're out there fighting for a championship, you do what you got to do. Uh, did did you run into Morgan Wallen? Did you see him up there? I, I gotta say, you know, I I never thought I'd say this. I still think his music's terrible, but I'm coming around a little bit on him just because he is he was there as a dedicated VFL, and if if he's gonna be in that circle with Peyton Manning and Josh Heupel and uh, uh, 
the basketball coach, uh, Barnes, if he's going to be there in that circle with those guys, then I think you got to kind of welcome him in as a, as a true VFL. And well, well Andy's going to be doing a concert at Neyland Stadium soon. You think that's what that video? Uh, yeah, indicated? I mean, it's a it's a pretty poorly kept secret. I mean, every, everyone already kind of knows. It just isn't official. Well, like, I didn't. Well, everyone connected already knows. Oh well, I'm not connected. So, yeah, it, it's 100% happening. He's going to do it in Neyland, you think? Yeah, I think it, it – I don't know if it's going to coincide with the – I think it might be the bye week or maybe maybe Oklahoma slash Arkansas week, one of those two. So they have an extra couple weeks to get the field ready before Florida and Alabama because, like, Tennessee doesn't really play any big home games, like, in September in, in Knoxville. So, like, it, it'll be early, you know, late September. Well, I just want to say that, that's I'm, definitely what he was alluding to in that thing. So, like, I, I'm not breaking any news here. Like, everyone, like I said, already kind of knows. Just want to say I'm I'm trying to come around on him as a because he, he's he's a VFL, so I, I'm doing my best. Uh, last thing on Omaha, did you did you do anything else while you were there? Or was it all surrounded around the baseball championship weekend? Did you go to any uh, maybe uh, aquariums or? Uh, I went to Jersey Mike's. Yeah, well, you mentioned that. You, you didn't uh, go to a rodeo I, or I got a little bit of an arm and shoulder workout in on Monday morning before uh, Jersey Mike's. Yeah. Uh, you, you referring to when you pumped off in your hotel room? No, we had four guys sharing a room together. There, there wasn't oh, really wow. any, yeah, nice. there wasn't really any, uh, Sounds any like time a party. For, wasn't really in time for pumping off. We kind of just made an agreement to kind of take care of each other. Um, just kind of out in the open, just with your hands. Yeah. Yeah. Just, yeah. uh, that's what friends are for. That's what friends are for. But no, no pumping off. There was a time I thought about sneaking in the bathroom and trying it, but uh, I was like, "Ah, eh, that'd be fine." Any women involved in this uh, situation, or no, 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 it was no all... women up there. I guess no, no. Yeah, well, that's no. okay. You didn't go no. to a rodeo, or I would have liked to have gone to a rodeo, but it was hotter than the fucking sun out there. So I don't think you it have any Omaha there. steaks by chance. Uh, no, I had some Jersey Mikes. Um, well, you said that, yeah. I ordered a pizza. I ordered a black box Domino's pizza on good, uh, good Sunday God. night. Lord. Two of them and some pretzel bites. You could have um, done that in Arkansas. Not pretzel bites, but uh, garlic bites. Did, you, did um, you go see Warren Buffett's house? or No, uh, the Uber driver said, like, if you turn up here, here's where Warren Buffett lives. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. Can you take me to the Iowa State line? Yeah, Berkshire Hathaway Drive. Yeah. Do you have can a cool you, can you pipe Uber driver? down and drive me to Iowa, please? The, the Uber driver was so confused. He's like, where do you want to go? I said, just go across the, the bridge, <laughs> sir. I'll give you $20. Just go across the bridge and just sit in the parking lot for like five minutes. I was like, we can just go up and turn around. It'll, I'll be done. He's like, what do you mean? I said, just drive. Drive here. Yeah. And you gave him $100? No, no, no. $20. $20. And he sat there and waited on you? I mean, we we're in the car. Oh, you were just going across so you could do it online. I see. I, see. I thought you meant you went in a casino or something. No, no. Oh, okay. No. You I just okay. had to be across the state line. So I was like, just, okay. just go up here, get off this exit, and wait a second. It was like it was like three minutes. Yeah. Okay. So it was a good day for him. Yeah. Well, I, I yeah. I mean, I'd do it for twenty dollars probably. I'd hope so. You'd be the fucking worst Uber driver ever if you wouldn't do it for <laughs> for out of towners. I, I would Get be so mad. Car. I would be Get so mad car. if you're like, actually, nah, I'm not gonna do this. It's like <laughs> it's like two o'clock on Sunday. Like, yeah, nowhere else to be. If you're just like, nah, I don't really have time. I would have like one fucking star. I can't believe you didn't go to a rodeo while you were up there. What? Too well, hot. What's the deal with with rodeos? Uh, that, you know, that's something I've been thinking about. What? what what's the deal? I mean, hey, let's, Jerry Seinfeld. Let's go ride a farm animal. Let, let's go sit on a farm animal and make that a, into a sport. See how many seconds we can sit on a farm animal. That's the dumbest shit I ever heard of. I'll, I'll say that they're not really farm animals at that point. They're tr they're trained athletes. We'll sit down on a damn farm animal. What's that <laughs> shirt you're wearing? That says Knoxville. So is that the Bucky's Beaver on that shirt, or what? No, what is it's that? a bear. It's just my. I, I played two games of kickball today. Oh, okay. So I, I did radio. I got a bunch of shirts ready to ship out. I played two <laughs> games of kickball, and I'm doing two podcasts uh, at fucking 930 and 1030 at night. So the people that met me in Omaha this week, uh, the people that show love, just know that I, I do it for you guys. Men and women. There were some women fans, finally. 
Oh, I yeah, I, I've seen a few of them around. I know they're they're out there. Yeah. So Any, shout out uh, to the fellas. Good shout looking, out to the ladies. Good looking ladies. They said they love them some Cody McClure. Well, you know, most women do. Most I women said, do. I said, I said, ladies, I'm, I'm not, I'm not interested. I'm not, I'm not looking. But I got a friend for you. Well, I got a friend of... for you that'll rock your world. Which, speaking of which, at kickball tonight, at kickball tonight, you know, it's co-ed. There's some girls, and right. um, there's an old woman that plays on my team. She was a free agent that got assigned, and uh, you know, she came up and was like, oh, funny story. Uh, the girls were the girls on the other team were asking about the captain of our team and and what his deal is and if he's single, and I'm the captain of the team. Yeah, and I was like, oh well, you know, blah blah blah. He's got I him. A, he's got him a woman, and then they're like, oh wait, no, not him. We're talking about the tall blonde guy. Mm. So my way more handsome friend. They were they were asking they were asking about him, and she was she thought that was so funny that they basically hit me with the. Uh, you know, the, there you go, looking like Kendrick Perkins again. The the thirty one oh seven mark. I they basically hit me with uh, the the not now or not you, fat Jesus that they hit Allen with in the Hangover when, when they tried to call uh Hey Handsome and he walked up and they're like not you, fat Jesus. That's basically how it felt like tonight with those girls, uh, making it very clear they're not asking about me. No, no, the actual handsome person on the team. Well, speaking of Jesus, I was sitting at the uh, sitting in the McDonald's parking lot a couple of days ago. There's been a lot uh, of people who turn to Jesus in that situation right there. Uh, yeah, well, I've been eating a lot more McDonald's breakfast than I should be lately. I, I tell you I, that, I, but I think that's the Kendrick uh, Perkins. I think that's why you look like Kendrick Perkins this week. Well, you know, I, I'm white, and he's he's black. I mean, we, we I, I can't see how we look too much alike i mean he's a white and black people can can look alike it's facial features it's not skin color i look just like hannibal burris you look just like kendrick perkins you do look like hannibal burris that is that is factual look at this when he does this with his eyes when he squints (laughs) so anyway i'm sitting in this mcdonald's parking lot and why are you booing me i'm right and this woman comes up to me and just staring at me through the window. And I, I'm like, I roll my window down. I'm like, can I help you? You know? And, and she, she says to me verbatim, she says, have you ever wondered why we're suffering? And it took me a second to, I was like, what? What the fuck are you talking about? And, the, and it took me a second. And I realized she probably, she's one of these Jesus people. She's going to pull out a pamphlet or something. And I just said, I'm not interested. And I rolled the window up. And she got in her van. They were coming out of the damn McDonald's. They had been in there eating, her and her family or whatever. And they come out like, I guess, I guess, she, well, you know what they say, always be selling, right? That's what they she, say. No, so, they say always, they say always be closing. They, okay, they don't well, say, they okay. don't say, always, they, they don't say always be selling. They do not talk about the ABSs of business. They talk about <laughs> the ABCs. They, they do not say always be selling. It's always be closing. But this woman might have invited you into a cult. Well, like maybe. not 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 church, but like an actual like cult. Maybe she had like a a Jim Jones, Charles Manson type of leader that she was going to bring you into the covenant. Well, you know, it's possible, but I just thought it was weird timing on it for her to walk right out of this McDonald's and just immediately the first stranger she sees as she walks out from her lunch, she just asked to, "Have you ever wondered why we're suffering?" Like, what a weird thing to ask. I mean, it's a good opening, I guess, if you're trying to, you know, sling some pamphlets. But I just, I said, you should have said because that bitch Eve couldn't keep her fucking mouth shut. Yeah, I tell you why I'm suffering. Next, next, next time they ask, say that. I tell you why I'm suffering is people like you walking out of McDonald's trying to sell me on some shit. That, no, no, but mine, you know, there's my, mine's better. Yeah, well, people around here they 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 like their religion. I mean, this is small town America, you know. The, my uh, my stepdad was telling me some pre- some pretty wild stuff the other night that I thought was interesting, and and I didn't agree or disagree with him. I just kind of listened to what he was saying, but he was telling me that, uh, and I wasn't aware of this, but he said that when Russia officially attacks Israel, that's when Jesus comes back. You know that? Because in the Bible it says an enemy will come from the north 
And so I guess it's implied in today's times that Russia would be that enemy. And, and my stepdad says, when Russia attacks Israel, you watch. That's when Jesus is coming back. I said, okay, well, that's interesting. And then he was telling me about this preacher, I guess he's been watching, he, that said uh, New York is the modern-day Babylon and that the Statue of Liberty, who's in, uh, she's in that city in, what, what's that big city in New York The where the, where the Statue of Liberty is? You know what I'm talking about? Biggest city in New York. Anyway, apparently in the Bible it says the Statue of Liberty is the great harlot. And I made notes of all this for the podcast because my stepdad was telling me all this stuff and I had no idea about any of it. Have you ever heard any of that? I'll say I'm tired of hearing you, Babylon. <laughs> oh, that's good. That's very good. Uh, you, you should join. You should do an improv uh, class or something. I think like I would that. be really good at improv, actually. Yeah, I'm quick witted. I just don't Ooh. think I have the. Uh, I have too much shame. I would. I would not be comfortable up there. I'd be too self conscious. So wait, you're telling <laughs> me that the Bible mentions the Statue of Liberty? That, that's what you're telling me. That's well. That's what your stepdad's I... telling me. Nice the Statue coming. of Liberty that we that we did not receive until, you know, France gave us a gift, you know, in like what the, I'd imagine the 1800s, this is just, the 1900s. I don't know when we got the Statue of Liberty, but I'd imagine the Bible was already around at that point. This is just what I heard about. So, so this is coming from some preacher, are, not, are not you, from are you my sure stepdad. He, but. Are you sure he wasn't confusing that with the Statue of Liberty started shaking her fist? Well, possibly. But the, apparently, this preacher thinks that she's the great harlot. There's something back in the, the Bible day. About the great back harlot. in the day, they would have burned this bitch at the stake, and maybe we need to get back to that. Speaking of great harlots, have you heard the story going around about this poor college girl, this Lily Lang? No, no. Actually, I heard someone reference Lily Lang, and then the other person say they don't understand. They tried looking into it and didn't get it. Well, and I, I said, man, it. I said, man, I'm thankful that I am on that. I'm on the other side of the Internet that doesn't get those stories. Well, I looked into it and it's actually very sad because they're pretty much ruining uh, an entire reputation of this poor college girl who apparently the story is basically that she may or may not have had a lot of casual sex. That, that's that's the whole story. And she's got this boyfriend, and apparently that he posted on Instagram a, a picture with her, and a couple of these burner accounts, uh, who I guess were guys who had hooked up with her, or said they were, they said they were. We don't even know if any of this is factual, but basically they all started saying this Lily Lane girl's like a, you know, a promiscuous girl, and and they've just completely destroyed. I mean, I can't imagine what this girl's going through. It, it got to the point. Antonio Brown tweeted about it. I and mean, it was the, guy, the person, the person running Antonio Brown's account. He, he's not tweeting from that account. That's not him. You think Antonio Brown's got a PR person sending out N word of the day? I think he's got a, I think he's got someone that is trying to write and be edgy and be funny on there. I don't think it's Ant Antonio Brown. Really? Yeah. I clearly, I, I don't. Well, he's using the, the F word, the gay slur a lot. I'm so edgy. He used an Asian slur, uh, the it's one that starts him. with the C. I don't, I don't uh, believe that. I, I think that it's a ghostwriter. You know the word I'm talking about? Yeah, cunt. No, oh. not that. It's not Chinaman either. It's the bad. Oh, one. oh, okay. Well, either way, let's move on. Well, anyway, this poor Lily Lane girl. I just, you know, thoughts and prayers. So wait, for her. did she kill herself, or has anything actually? I don't think she's killed herself yet. But, oh, okay. I thought that's where she, that story was headed, where, like, she got drove to kill herself. It's just it's just sad, really. I mean, she's just some college girl that may or may not have had a lot of sex. And, like, now she... Like, how many people are we talking about? It was trending. I mean, it was like... No, but, like, how many people claim to have sex with her? Uh, several, I think. Like, five? 25? I, I don't know. The room Do they have was, videos? Do they say, like, they, they ran a train on her, like, a gangbang? Or is it just like, hey, I hooked up with this girl? I don't, that's kind of lame. I mean, it's it's all it's all lame. But like, how how many people are we talking? Claim to have sex with this person? Do we know? I think like a lot, several frat dudes, but I don't know the exact number. More or less than like ten. Uh, yeah, probably more. Probably. 
I mean, I think it's fucked up, but yeah, but I didn't know if you were familiar with it. It was it was going around. No, I don't. I don't care about those things on the internet. I'm a 34 year old grown man. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, same, same here. But it's just it, it was trending. I mean, I don't care about the war in Israel, but it's trending. You know? Every Monday night, Monday Night Raw is the number one trend on Twitter. Do you go through there and read about it? Not always. <laughs> Usually, Friday Night SmackDown also the number one trend. Do you go through and read about it? Not always. No. Well, it's it's trending. That means it must be important. You got internet brain. You can turn your phone off during the day. Are you lonely? Are you bored? Are you ready to move out of Arkansas? Are you ready to come home to Knoxville? Well, do you need, yeah. Do, do, you, I mean, it, uh, do you need something to give you some purpose in life? Probably. I mean, it won't be long. It'll be just, you know, a couple of weeks. How are we progressing over there? Is 20, 21 days, I think. Uh, or not, not exactly 21 days, I guess, because that would be three weeks, but. Is everything coming along good we, over there? My, we got a we got a countdown on the website. Um, from honestly, return. I don't know. I, I've been so I've just been out of the fucking loop after Omaha, bro. I have it. We got eighteen yeah. days. Holy shit! Eighteen days and eight hours is what the uh, the countdown on the website says. Well, I don't think people officially know this, so this is kind of breaking news here that we're letting out that July fifteenth is the day, right? I don't think people knew that countdown clock was for for the new lineup thing. Mm, I talked about it on the radio a little bit that like we're going to a full lineup on July fifteenth. We've been talking about that. Oh, okay. But not like you know any details. I kind of just figured you'd kind of just show up on Monday and people would see the video and be like, "Oh shit, that's nice, Cody's yeah, back." Look who's back. Yeah. yeah. I, I, is this a rerun? To... What 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 is Hannibal Burris doing with Kendrick Perkins <laughs> in Knoxville? That's so weird. Uh, better maybe than that's... being with Hannibal Lecter. Am I right? Um, hey, I, good one. Maybe that's what we really. should do. Maybe that's what we should do for uh, our Halloween show. We have to dress up this year. I've station got a, rule. I've got a video that. What, are we going to do blackface? Or... <laughs> no, that's what makes it funny. Oh, okay. Seems like not a lot of people are going to get it. No, they're going to know. The people that watch this on YouTube are going to be like, holy shit, he does look like Kendrick Perkins now. I don't look anything like Kendrick <laughs> Perkins, I, other I'm than tell, having a beard. Tell, it's not even when you have the beard. It's when you look down. Like, it's when you tilt. Yeah. Now come back up slowly. <laughs> it's Kendrick Perkins, everybody. Is holy it, shit. Well, what is it? Is it the eyebrows? It's the, the round nose, face, the I think. It's everything. It's just you are Kendrick Perkins. Just about a he foot. About a foot, like and a, about a foot and a half shorter. Um and breathes a little bit louder into the microphone, but looks wise, you're a dead ringer. Who do you think's dunked more recently, me or Kendrick Perkins? <laughs> you actually, because I've been out a, on the hoop. I'd bet a lot of money that you have dunked more recently than he has. He's not as fat as I am either. I'd say you weigh about the same. Well, that's really saying a lot. I think I weigh about ten pounds more than I did when I got back from Texas. Mama's cooking. They've been Mama's feeding cooking me, man. <laughs> They've been feeding me like you can't imagine. <laughs> they're, they're trying yeah. to fatten you up before they slaughter you. That's what they do down in Arkansas <laughs> with all the damn pigs. They do slaughter hogs here. That's a good point. Uh, I wrote another song. I completed another help, song. Help, help me, Mama, I'm fat. <laughs> help, help me, Mama, you're killing me. How about that one? How about we write a song, Save Me Mama, You're Killing Me? Okay, It'll now be let a, me write that down in my notes. Save Me Mama, You're Killing Me. It'll be a double entendre. The inspiration will be your mother overfeeding you and how it killed you and how you couldn't say no to her, but we'll also make it a love song about a, a toxic woman that you can't say no to that's bad for you. So it'll be a double entendre, kind of yes. like that, kind of like that closing time song. Oh, some some real Sigmund Freud shit here, huh? What do you think about it? That's, we got a good start. Help me, Mama, you're killing me. That's pretty good. Closing time. Or we think, help me, Mama, or save me, Mama, you're killing me. I like help me, Mama. Okay, help me, Mama, you're help killing me. Help me, Mama, you're killing me. Yeah, it'll be um, a little bluesy. Yeah, well, I know the blues. I got soul. I cannot my, get over how much you look like Kendrick Perkins. I know I my, keep bringing it up, but yeah, I know. My plan is to hopefully have an album ready to release by 
in maybe December, maybe by an Christmas. Al- an album or an EP? Well, what's what's the difference? What's an EP? EP sounds a little bit more attainable. That's that's where you have like five really good songs that you're trying to get out there. Okay, well, I can probably do that. Yeah. I'm going to need help with the distribution and the production and uh, and pretty much everything. Well, an EP so. doesn't have to be as well produced and everything. That's part of the appeal of it. It's just kind of like a, in rap turns, it's like kind of the first mixtape you drop. That's like a, you know, like a one where you're actually making like your own songs on it and stuff. I need to figure out what Billie Eilish and her brother did because they pretty much did all their stuff on their computer by themselves on their, on their first album. What, what did they do? They were uh, really fucking talented. <laughs> And she had a really good gimmick. That that's ah, what they did. They're no more talented than me. It's just I just got to distribute it. I just got to put it out. You just got to put your art out there. Well, I'm not disagreeing with that take. I'm just saying she, she is much more talented than you. We don't know that for a fact. You've never heard my music. Uh, yeah, you sing that one song for me. Now you know if this "Help Me, Mama, You're Killing Me," you know this is this could be the one that puts you over the top. <laughs> You've been feeding me since I was three. No, uh, no, it can't necessarily be been... that. It's got to sound more like a love song. I know you love me, mama. Yeah, but okay. I'm overstuffed. I've had, my, I've, I've had my fill or something like that. I'm about to blow. Something about the trough. The you've, trough. Been a hog, you've been a hog at the trough. <laughs> a hog at the trough for your love, mama. I've been a hog at the trough for your love, mama. Hog and trough kind of flow. But I can't I was, take uh, it. But I can't take it no more. More. I was also I was gonna say no the, mo, but we're not making a rap song. Write yeah. that down though. Hog at a trough no for mo. your love. I mean, I guess it could be a rap, but I feel like no, I'm more, no, of, we a, don't, more we, of a soul kind of yeah, artist. Yeah, no, we we don't want it to be a rap. We don't, no one's gonna take us seriously as rappers. Yeah, us. What are you doing? Uh, I'm now part of the songwriting team. Yeah, you're gonna you're gonna see all this money start coming in and try to, you want try help? to get a hold of some of it. Do you, do you think <laughs> Billy Eilish would have worked out if she's thought that way about her brother? Well, I am gonna need some help with management and production. And uh, I, I thought we were heterosexual life mates here. Why why are you trying to cut me out? You can uh, you can help schedule my tours. Yeah, I'll do that. I think, yeah. we, I think we'll be we like we'll be like in. Tiger we'll be like Tiger Woods and his daddy. Yeah, just like that. <clears throat> I do feel I am kind of relating to Tiger recently because I've been waking up with back pain and it's getting worse. <laughs> been popping a lot of pills and mixing it with alcohol and getting behind the wheel. Yeah, Percocet, man, lifesaver. That'll be another song. Let me write that down. Percocet. Dot dot dot. It's a lifesaver. Um. It's been getting worse. It's progressively worse. And I'm wondering what's going on, you know, with my back. I think you're just overweight, man. Yeah, well, that's got a lot to do with it, probably. I think my stepdad's going to let me shoot the AR-15 soon, too. He said we were going to, because I was asking him about it. <laughs> you're 30 fucking years old. 31 years old. Like, you, my dad, stepdad, steppa's gonna let me shoot the gun. It's something you say when you're fucking 13. Well, I've never shot an AR 15 before. I get to go out in the field and shoot some hogs. That is what we're gonna do. We're gonna go out in the field and be careful. He's gonna lend you if you're not careful. I'm kind of excited about it because the, the, power I, of it, you know, I, I don't know exactly what it feels like, but this could I, be a real Chris Kyle situation if you're not careful. He's not <laughs> tired of you taking his damn recliner and, and cooking steak in his own damn house. <laughs> I don't think he's planning to kill me with it. Uh, I've been playing guitar you with be, my dad, too. You, you better be careful. They're fattening you up. You better, you better be careful. You're about <laughs> right. For yeah, I've been playing guitar with my dad. You and, you and, you um, and your other Paul are, are strumming the strings. Do you sing your song to him? No, I hadn't sung him my song, but I, I just sang him some Rolling Stones. Uh, oh, that's another thing. This week, Stones are in Chicago. I'm planning to go up there Sunday. So you couldn't be bothered to go watch your team win a national uh, championship <laughs> or celebrate that. But you can go see the goddamn Rolling Stones for the third time in two months. Seventh time. It'll be the seventh and final time. I'm assuming it'll be the final time. Uh, meeting my buddy Brandon up there, and we're going to go watch the boys. 
probably for the last time. Now, how about this? Look at one week's time. Look at everything. I got so much going on. It's a busy week. Can you imagine seeing your Vols win a natty and seeing the Stones in the same damn week? It's pretty cool. I got tickets to see Zach Bryan on Saturday. And, yeah. Every time you go to a Rolling Stones concert, I go to a Zach Bryan concert. Well, that seems like a much different type of concert, but, you know, I hope you have a good time, too. And also... I might not go. It's outside at, at Nissan Stadium. It might be too hot for me. Oh, yeah, it'll be real hot. Plus, I'm supposed to go to that be- the beach the next week, so... Oh, you're going to the beach? Yeah. What What are you, you going to lay in the sand with the other whales, or what? what uh, what's your plan there? I really just want to go lay by the pool i would love just to stay in knoxville and just get drunk at the pool and and oh in... there's another song let's get drunk at the pool that's a song title right there that'd be a number one hit on the radio <laughs> hey you and me baby why don't we go get drunk at the pool no i don't like that one no nope. so stones in chicago vols win a natty two house of the dragon episodes the first presidential debate. Are you listening to me? God damn it. The first I'm presidential listening. debate is tomorrow too. Okay. This is a jam packed week. Plus I've got, I've got, I'm cleaning the dentist office twice this week. I'm mowing my Mimi's yard tomorrow. And, uh, I mean, this is a busy week for me. I don't know. How I'm going to squeeze all this in the debates tomorrow night. There's a debate tomorrow night. Yeah. And I need to be trying to do some door dashing too. try to get some money for this Chicago trip. But I'll be making some money from cleaning the dentist office. Go buy the Come Home Cody t-shirt. I finally, I finally shipped out all of the world's greatest podcast in America. <laughs> um, the, the, the things tee, the one that had the bunny and the money and all that. Uh, it's finally out. Everyone should have them by the end of the week. I'm sorry it took a long time. Uh, we prioritized the baseball <laughs> team. Jesus Christ. And then we also, the printer got messed up and like the money thing got messed up. It was a whole thing, but they, they all should be out now. And I hope, I hope that over the next two days, all of the come home Cody t-shirts will be out and in the mail as well. Well, the important thing is you've already got everybody's money. That's the number one that is thing. True. So that is maybe. true. I need I need more of it. I need people to buy more shirts. <laughs> Fanrunradio.com slash shop and just look for the, the world's greatest podcast in America stuff. Uh, I take pride in the fact that we are the number one uh, sh- uh, selling show on, now, on the station. Now, let me ask this. Did, did anyone uh, capitalize on my idea for the uh, national champion shirt? Did, did, uh, did management like that? Uh, idea or, or uh, I, I gotta be honest big fella i didn't read anything that was in that thread this weekend because i was drunk and, and dancing and celebrating so okay well that's, I, what, what was your that's, idea well my idea was real simple it's just an orange shirt with white letters that says national champion so average joe can wear it around and show his buddies hey i'm a national champion look at me real simple but it just it doesn't say champions you see what I'm getting at here? There's no S. It just says national champion, as in I'm a champion. You're a champion. We meet on the street wearing these shirts. Hey, how you doing, champion? You see what I'm saying? Well, if you guys meet on the street, then you're national champions. Well, yes. Yes. It would so you kind of have to wear it at that point. You kind of got to wear the shirt alone. You can't really wear it out in a crowd because if somebody else wears it, then – then it kind of falls apart, you see. Well, well, if they take a picture together, then then yeah, it becomes plural. People say, "Oh, look, we've got a couple of national champions here." But yeah, then it um, just all falls apart. Okay, yeah. Well, I mean, there may be a couple of holes. You know, no no need to sink the I canoe. Actually, I actually do like it. Yeah, I do too. That's why I ran it by the the group there, and nobody really uh, replied. But. Uh, yeah, yeah. Like I said, I, I it popped up on my phone, and I was like, ah, you know, I'm I'm too drunk to taste this chicken. I, I gotta, I gotta right. close this phone and get back to dancing. All right, champ, kind. That's an Anchor Man 2004 reference there for everybody. If you didn't get that, I'm too drunk to taste this chicken. That's from um, that's from Anchor Man. I would have. I actually thought it was from Talladega Nights. I think. Yeah, it was Anchor Man. Um, I'm not really well versed in Will Ferrell stuff. In other news, uh, well, I mean, this is the last story. David it's eleven fifteen. By the way. it's eleven seventeen. I, 
It's the last story. It better be well, good. We got to give the people a podcast here, my friend. We're giving I mean, them a podcast. They got a goddamn hour. It's eleven o'clock. I'm tired. I got to get this up and be in bed and hopefully asleep by twelve thirty, so I can get up and start this whole fucking process over again. So get uh, on with it. Well, now give it me sounds, your last story of the day. Now lower your voice a bit. It sounds like you're lashing out about decisions that you've made. Okay. Now, now these are all decisions that you made. Going up there to Omaha and drinking for four days and doing all kinds of who, who knows what. No, that, that has nothing to do with what I had to do today. I had a busy day, so let's go. Last story. Let's go. Give it to me. Well, I was going to say that. Uh, all I, right. Podcast is over. I'll, I'll well, talk no, no, to you. Uh, I'll talk to you later. Uh, maybe uh, Sunday. Here. Are you going to be in Chicago on Sunday? Or are you going to be? Uh, when's the Rolling Stones concert? Uh, just text me. We'll figure it out. I think I set a record.